Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy, a podcast with tips to make your life easier, covering pop culture, parenting, travel, minimalism, and more. Hey everybody, and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm Jeff. I'm Amy. And guess what? Unlike most podcasts, I don't know what's going on this time. I have no idea what you have in store for us today. Yes, this one's a little bit unique because Jeff has absolutely no idea even what the topic is. I know, I don't know. I'm just in, I'm I'm coming in blind, people, and, uh, you know, I'm no safety net. So let's do this. I thought it would be kind of fun to do a bit of a quiz format. Quiz format. For okay. this episode. Sounds good to me. And we're going to focus on acronyms. Jeopardy-like? Like, do I have to answer in the form of a question? No, that's too much. Okay. That's, that's too, too that's way too much pressure get, for anyone. We would probably get uh you know sued for that. <laughs> oh, I'm so bummed that James isn't on Jeopardy anymore. If you yeah. were following James He was just... uh he was so socially awkward but so brilliant. Uh it was very interesting to watch. It was. And I think he was a big fan of um, you know, heavier style music because every time he wrote his name, he did it in the in the in the topography of certain bands like ACDC and oh, stuff really? like that, I noticed that. Yeah, I knew he did different styles for his name each episode, but I didn't see a pattern. And you can tell that you can tell that he was a very um, uh, what, superstitious. You know, like he always picked the well, same yeah. amounts. Like well, he's a professional sports and, gambler, and I think gamblers tr- traditionally have like a lot of superstitions. I mean, he was only thirty thousand dollars or so, like less than like short of the record i almost felt like he he did it on purpose i know i don't know why but i had a feeling like he did it on purpose is this is this whole episode going to be about james no it absolutely isn't it's going to be me quizzing you on acronyms acronyms and if you're listening i want you to guess as well this where you this is where you guys get to see how ignorant i actually am (laughs) Oh, I, these, a lot of these surprise me too. Some of them I'm sure our listeners will know, but I think that there's some that I was not aware of and maybe it'll be a little bit of an eye opener and a WHO? conversation, a conversation World topic. Health Organization. Yes. Good job. See? See. Yeah. End of podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. What got me thinking about this was I saw a post on social media about club like as in a club sandwich. And that club stood for, uh, according to this post, chicken lettuce under bread. Chicken lettuce under and bread. And I thought, geez, that's, you know, something I never knew. And I did a little bit of research on it, and it turns out there's actually a lot of debate around that one. So the Union Club in New York City likes to take credit for having invented it. Right. So they say it's named after their club. That's why it's called the club. Or people often think it's, uh, you know, just originated in country clubs in general. And it's named after like short for clubhouse. Yeah. So I did some more research and there's actually a term for this. Sometimes they'll say there are certain words out there that are not acronyms, but then people make up what they could stand for and they call oh, them yeah. backronyms. Backronyms. Well, I'm learning something new right now because honestly, when it comes to just this particular acronym club, I would, I wouldn't even really think about it. I would just want to eat it. Like I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm just like, okay, I'll take the, I'll I'll take the club. I never think about what the CLUB stands for. Well, no. And I just assumed a clubhouse too. And that it, I don't know what I actually assumed. I guess I didn't really think about it much either. Probably because I was so excited to eat. (laughs) So another sort of old language myth is around the word posh. So what does what does posh mean to you? Uh, that just I think it means you know sort of um, elevated status, you know that kind of thing. Okay, so there was there's a claim that it stands for port out starboard <clears throat> starboard home. Now, when I say port and starboard, what do you think? Well, having a, with all your sh- navy a ship, experience, a ship, yeah, <laughs> you know. a ship. So according to the tale, the first posh people were actually wealthy British ship passengers who could afford to book two cabins on their trips to India, one on the port side of the ship and then the other on the starboard sh- side of the ship. Wow! And the reason they did this is to, uh... <coughs> oh my goodness, my first podcast cough. That's okay. You got to do it. <laughs> I got to tickle my throat. We're all human people. So the reason they would book two cabins is so that they could have the most comfortable trips away from the sun. So when they headed out, uh, they were on one side, and when they returned, they would go to the other side so they could be uh, in the most comfortable side of the ship based on where the sun was hitting. And that's how posh. Yeah, uh, because only the rich could afford 
to pay for port out starboard home. See, I can pretty much guarantee that absolutely zero percentage of the Real Housewives know that posh means that. Well, yet the, they call the, themselves posh. But the thing is, is that is act that it's it's well believed to be a myth. Oh, so that's so a backronym. A backronym. Okay. Another one is golf. Golf. Gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. Oh, that, that's made up. That's got to be made up. Yeah. So I they, know that it is a tradition in golf. Remember when we were in uh, Scotland and we right got at the, the whole, uh, the, the old clubhouse in Saint in Andrews. Andrews. Yeah. But and, that since changed, you know. Well, yes, but yeah, but it was even recently. You know, it's like in recent decades there was uh, you know no women allowed for certain functions. Right. But yes, yeah, so golf is another example of a backronym. Um, tips. Mm-hmm. Another backronym would be. To ensure prompt service. Oh, okay. Tips to, what was it? <laughs> tips, to? the word tips, yeah. like giving tips, yeah. means to ensure prompt service. Uh, that's got to be made up as well. Again, that's another made up one. That's a backronym. And okay, then, so I'm doing okay with this quiz so far. I've, I've got two more backronyms and then we'll get into some real ones. Oh, okay. I just found these entertaining. No, this is super entertaining. Now this one, I I won't say what the word is, but you can figure it out based on what it's supposed to stand for. Fornication under consent of the king. Mm-hmm. F-U-C-K. Wow. Fornication <laughs> under consent of the king? That's right. So and what, people were only allowed to fornicate when the king told them that they could? I guess so. Well, that's a very powerful king. <laughs> and then the last one uh, that I have that's I sort am of the a, king of copulation. A, a fake one is fertilizer <laughs> labeled... <laughs> Fertilizer was labeled to be shipped high in transit. Shipped high in transit. Re- that's so good. that's S-H-I-T. total back. I T. Yeah, no, that's... and I have no idea why. Why? Yeah. Why that would fertilizer would need to be shipped high in transit? But uh, yeah, that's strange. So I found those fascinating, but we're we're going to get into the quiz part of the episode. Oh. So, and I want to give the people listening, you know, time to. Guess too. So as Jeff's taking his time to figure it out, I will take no time. Yeah, see if you can see if you can guess it too, and uh, and we'll start with a couple of easy ones just to to see if you uh, to get you warmed up. Okay, all All right, right? let's do it. Yeah. Okay, the first one's ridiculously easy. RSVP. Requested songs for video play. (sighs) Yeah, you got it. (laughs) Did I? No. No. (laughs) RSVP. (laughs) That is yeah. That is that is one version of it. I guess that's a backronym, isn't it? Oh, that's just like a, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, someone was bored and made up nonsense. What is it? Well, you don't you don't have a guess? No. What is it? Well, when is an RSVP used? Well, when you're like you know want something to be held for you, you know. Well, it's on an invitation. When you yeah. get an invitation, you RSVP and let them know whether or not you're going. It's requested is the first word, right? No, it's actually Reserve. French. French. Oh. Répondez, s'il vous plaît. Oh, répond, uh, répondez, s'il, s'il vous plaît. plaît. Yeah. Like, I, I had no idea about like, that. Please answer and let us yeah. know whether or not you're coming. Yeah. So it's actually not used much uh, in France now. It's considered more formal and old-fashioned, but I mean, we use it a lot still on invitations and things like that here mm-hmm. in, uh, in North America. Base jumping. What do you think base stands for? That's a good question. I don't know, but it ha- would have to do something f- about like, you know, jumping from high, like very high heights. Well, so base is, uh, base jumping is a form of parachuting where jumpers leap from fixed objects. Um, it actually started back in the 1980s. And the name base comes from four types of fixtures that you can jump from, which are buildings, oh. um, antenna, span, or earth. Oh, I didn't know so that. So that's what base stands for in base jumping. It's kind of like the only the only people who would really know that besides us because we're brilliant on our podcast is our people who are actual base jumpers, it seems. You know? Well, I actually didn't even know that the word itself was an acronym. No, I didn't know either. But <laughs> I never thought but at the same time I never thought that they were jumping from a base. Like I, I never even think about words most of the time. <laughs> words. Words. This is an interesting one because Hux asked me this tonight. What it, what is uh, as he was eating his M and M's? He asked me what the M and M stood for. 
Oh, yeah. Or I guess I remember that. someone said recently to me they should just be called M's because there's only one M on each candy. <laughs> oh, that's true. But, uh, but the package says M&M's. Do you know what m and M stands for? Yeah, it's a couple of people's names, but I can't remember. Mimi or something? Mars and Muri. Mars and Muri. And so, they're the two people that started the business. So it, there was a deal where Muri got like 20% stake in the newly developed M&M. And then the steak was later bought out by Mars when chocolate rationing ended at the uh, end of the war in 1948, the end of the Second World War. So, yes. Quite a cash crop for them. So it's the co-creators of M&M's. That's interesting. Here's one for you. Okay. Uh, You should definitely be able to get this one. I don't know, man. I haven't gotten one yet. (laughs) I'm not keeping score, but (laughs) if I were, it would be an easy one to keep. (laughs) AWOL. AWOL. Oh, that's just, uh, you know, when... I know what I know what the definition is, but what is the uh, what is what, the what's the definition? I can't recall. Well, it's just when you're away from where you should be, right? You like you take off. So it stands for absent without official notice. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's what it is. My yeah. brain is just not working. We had a we went to a friend's fortieth birthday party last night. And my brain's just not working for these acronyms. Or absent without official leave. That's me right now. I'm absent without official leave. My brain. But, you know, that's pretty interesting, though. I should know that because I was in the Navy early in the day. Here's another one, then. Here, we'll get into the more, uh, the more, maybe more current. Do you know what PDF stands for? Uh, no. Do you know what PDF is? Uh, yeah, some kind of a file. Right, so it's actually portable document format. Portable document, so you can usually open it on any device. Is that what that well, basically means? Well, yeah, and it means? retains its... Uh, you know, whatever format it is in, it'll retain it. Okay. Regardless of who's opening it. And so when people say PDF format, it's yeah. actually redundant because the F in PDF stands for format. Okay. So portable document format. Mm-hmm. Um, Pam. Pam. Like cooking spray. Oh, uh, I'm going to say uh, pot... Aromatic moisturizer. Hmm. Not, no, not close. But you know what? This one's a hard one because, again, it's kind of no after idea. the name of the inventor. So the P stands for product, and it's a product of Arthur Meyerhoff. Oh, man. How am I supposed to know that <laughs> crap? That's well, something Ken Jennings and James Holes, whatever his name is, it knows. It's it, it's it's uh it's now owned and distributed by Conagra Foods, but Pam's been around since 1961. Yeah, so that yeah that was a hard one, but let's try this one. They're all difficult for me, every one of them. Okay, how here's here's it here's a super easy one. Oh God, <laughs> don't ridicule me, please, if I don't know it. I haven't ridiculed you once. Oh yes, you have. Keep going. Scuba. Oh, I know this one. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Yes. Mm. See, good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Jeff won acronyms, a number I can't count. But What what do I win? Is it over? No. Oh. No, we've got a whole episode of this stuff. Oh, right. Okay. (laughs) Hopefully people are picking up some interesting ones and uh, maybe learning learning a few you didn't know about. Out of all of them, I think that's probably the one people knew the most. Probably. Yeah. Care package. Now, I always thought care package just stood for like you care about someone, you send well, them a package. Isn't that what it stands for? Or I, I had no idea. So the first care package is... Customer? Um, no. They were they were put together in the aftermath of the Second World War, and the aim was um, for providing food relief to war-torn Europe. So they were the work of what was then a newly formed humanitarian agency that was known as the... Cooperative for American Remittances to Europe, later changed to the Cooperative for Assistance and Relief Everywhere. Mm. So that is what CARE stands for. And it was founded back in 1945. So that's where CARE packages originates from. That is very interesting because I always just thought it was like you sent a package because you cared. Well, yeah. Parents would send them to their kids in university and... I would, I would always get I don't care packages, and that would be no package. <laughs> I don't care packages. <laughs> I don't your care. empty box. Here's your empty box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting, though. These are, these are words and, like, you know, anagrams and backagrams that we never really 
think about. Yes. And we're, we're uh, you know, the bringing back, them back, to light. Backronyms are, yeah, they're, I mean, they're fake in a way, but I'm sure that there's other ones that are out there that I haven't mentioned. If you uh, want to hop on our social media, if you know any cool backronyms where you think people have just sort of made up what mm. real words might or could stand for, I'd like to hear them because they're pretty interesting what people come up with. Yeah, definitely drop us a line. Here's Love one. To hear uh, from you. GIF. GIF. As in G-I-F. As in like the animated yes. photographs or whatever that we... <laughs> what do you think the G-I-F stands for? I, did, I knew this at one point, but I cannot recall. I can't, I don't know. It stands for... Graphics, graphics, interchange, interchange, format, format. That was on Jeopardy a while back. I remember that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was a you know what does it stand for? So the, it was an American computer scientist, still uh, Steve Wilhite, created GIFs in '87, uh, and he actually feels that it should be pronounced GIF, not GIF. GIF, but everybody. But we all say GIF, so that's how it's pronounced. Everybody has a different Sorry, way of Steve. pronouncing it. Yeah, no, I don't. You find that I I, I don't often I'm hear GIF. Say, well, that's that's uh, our friends. I know some friends of ours that say it that way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's just not a word that we comes shall up remain that nameless. <laughs> Get it done in a GIF. E. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this one really blew my mind. Canola. That stands for something? Yes. Come on. It does. There's too many letters. And I actually had to check it in a couple of places because some of these, you know, obviously when you're looking on the <clears> internet, <throat> there's different takes on certain words and obvious, and some have, there's a lot of controversy <laughs> over what acronyms stand for. So, um, but canola was fairly consistent as to what people felt it stood for. There was some history around it. Okay. What is it? I'm, so, I'm at the edge of my seat I'm going to give a, a more of a full background on this one because it's... It's, it, I found it fa- really fascinating. So there's a plant that has the unfortunate name of rape seed. Rape seed. Right? And when it's crushed, it makes an excellent vegetable oil. But unfortunately, the oil contains lots of something called um, erucic acid. I'm going to, I can probably completely massacre it how that's pronounced, but. That's okay. People get the idea. <laughs> so in high doses, uh, that acid is toxic, toxic to humans. But um, back in the late 60s, a new version of the rape plant that only had trace amounts of the nasty acid uh, was developed. And in honor of the country of its birth where it was developed, they called the new edition canola, which is an acronym that stands for Canada Oil Low Acid. Canada Low Oil Acid. Canada Oil Low Acid. (laughs) Canada oil. So the C-A-N is Canada. Yeah. The O is oil. And the L-A at the end is low acid. Wow. Mind blown. I had no idea. I know. I had no idea either. Yeah. So that's that's a a three-part acronym. I thought there was like a canola plant. Well, sometimes, I mean, most acronyms are just the first, you know, letter of of each word. But that sometimes they'll use the first couple letters. Yeah. So they use C-A-N for Canada. Huh. Canada oil low acid. Well, how about that? Um, what about SIM, as in SIM card? Do you know what a SIM card is? I do. Uh, so we have SIM cards in our cell phones. We went, you know, the most... I don't know. Okay, so it's subscriber identification module. Uh, well, how about that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that's how they can identify who the subscriber is with the SIM card. Because it's, a, yeah, it's like a fingerprint, really, for your device. But I think SIM is in, like, Sim City is, must be, it's probably like, what, simulated? I actually tried to find that up, find that, look that up, but I think it's just simulated, must be simulated city. I actually, I've never played that game, have you? No. No, I don't think I have. Uh, I was just thinking, what, what, the, uh, v, there's a VPN, what does that stand for? Oh, or, uh, oh so now you're quizzing me. Yeah. Um. Oh, I want to say like virtual priv- provider network. I can't think of what the P stands for. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just asking you. Maybe. And what's that? Uh, there's a it VIM, allows you to VIM number on a car. What's that stand for? Vehicle uh, identification number. It's VIN. Yes, that's, or N. VIN. That's what it is, right? Yes. And VIM that you use to clean your... <laughs> I don't <laughs> anyway, know. Anyway, go ahead. The quiz doesn't go both <laughs> <next> ways. <laughs> okay. This is good. Arby's. 
Harpies, I thought it was, I honestly always just thought it was like the last name or the first name of uh, whoever owned uh, the business. Well, this one, I don't know if it's a true acronym because the A-R-B-Y doesn't stand for something specific, but Arby's is a play on R-B. So just the letters R and B um, for the chain founders. So it was the Rafael brothers who came up with Arby's or founded Arby's. So the okay. initials for Rafael brothers is rb you know they came up with rbs but then there was a campaign in the 80s that sort of came up with like a a fake backronym where they said rb stood stood for america's roast beef yes sir isn't that funny (laughs) so they use that as an ad campaign (laughs) well there's the there's the one about adidas too do you remember did you ever remember that one no well adidas is all day I dream about sex. But, Not it's, sneakers? but it's a backronym. Wouldn't they be dreaming about sneakers? Well, that's the way I heard it. I don't know. I didn't make it up, okay? It's a, <laughs> I like I like a, you know, I like I like the version that's a little bit more on the edge. Okay. You know, sne- who's going to dream about sneakers? People who love Adidas, I guess. I thought fornication under consent of the king was very risque. <laughs> it was really hard to get that in there and still maintain our clean rating. I know. <laughs> Smart car. Uh, yes. Again, this one threw me off because I thought smart just meant you're really smart because you're driving sort of an energy efficient car that's good for the environment. So I thought that's what a smart car was. I Yeah. Is What's the first word? Just so, tell me the first. At, the, what's S stand for? So it's swatch. Okay. I'm, I'm lost. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so it's actually, so smart car is made by Daimler organization and, uh, which and it began in Germany in the late 80s. So it was originally known as the Swatch Mobile because the car was developed by the same company that makes Swatches. Swatch watches? Do you remember the old the Swiss Swatch company? Wa- Swatch right. watches? No, a Germ- well, Germany. Oh, I thought it was Swiss. I thought, oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. I, th- I always thought Swatch was a Swiss company, but maybe not. Oh, well, I'll have to Google that. Yeah, yeah maybe not. <laughs> so the same company that made Swatch watches... Um, made the smart automobile. So originally they were called Swatch Mobiles. And then the name Smart Car was chosen in the mid 90s because they use it as an acronym for Swatch Mercedes Art. So S is Swatch, M is mm. Mercedes, and then Art. How artsy. How artsy of those smart car manufacturers. Well, like when, when you have a smart TV, what, what does that stand for anything? I think it actually is just because. Because it's smart. Yeah. Like it's well, in t- it's, uh, I'll bet you it's artificial intelligence of some kind. To I bet take you it's over an your acronym. whole home. We'll have to do a part two and then I'll can bring, I can quiz you. I, I'll do a little bit of research myself. That doesn't sound like much fun at all. Oh, yes, it does. For our listeners, they're going to be on the edge of their seats. <laughs> and so will I. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. I'll take I'll take the challenge. It can't or be maybe, acronyms, so it picks up the notes. Maybe, maybe no, maybe else. we'll just do like a five minute, you know, filler on one of our previous or uh, future product podcast. We hardly need filler. We can barely get in all the words as it stands. I know. <laughs> Snafu. I know this one. It's, I don't know. So a snafu is a mistake, right? It's a general state of confusion. And it was coined in the early 40s. And it was apparently coined by, um, by American troops during the Second World War. And according to the Oxford English Dictionary... It's an expression conveying the common soldier's uh, lasonic acceptance of the disorder of war and the ineptitude of his superiors. Namely, and so this is what it stands for, situation normal, all effed up. Oh, yes, that's what it is. So that's sort of like the normal state of affairs is that it's all effed up. So it's just a constant state of chaos, basically, which is normal. In war, sometimes, right? Yeah, is is it lasonic? Did I say I don't know that word? Lasonic. So, sometimes I I read words and I've never seen them before. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> I'm like common soldiers' lasonic acceptance. Yeah. Anyways, my apologies if I if I massacre the pronunciation of that one. Nerf. Nerf. This like one's Nerf a fun football. one. Nerf football yeah, and stuff nerf, like that. Nerf guns, uh, all the Nerf products. I know this one. I don't know, though. 
Non-expandable recreational foam. Whoa, that's very descriptive. It is. But it does expand. It must, it's just if you the, crumple it up, a Nerf ball, and you let it go, it expands. Yes, but it probably doesn't It doesn't expand beyond its original shape. Uh, that's true. It doesn't. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And Nerf is a huge uh, company, Like, and they've been around forever. They must have came out after the war as well, shortly after the war. Zip code. Zip code. I don't know. Zip stands for... Zone Improvement Plan. So the American Uh, Postal Service in 63 wanted to speed up delivery. So they divided the country into these identifiable numerical zones. Oh, yeah. And there was some disagreement as to whether the zip of zip code is an acronym or a backronym. But either way, it's said to stand for Zone Improvement Plan. So in Canada, we don't have zip code. We have a postal code. What does that stand for, huh? Postal. Oh, yeah. Okay. I knew that. (laughs) Epcot. Uh, exhibition. Uh, I don't know. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what Epcot is, right? Uh, Epcot like, Center, like yeah. A, yeah, like at Disney World. Yeah. So it's an acronym for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. So it's a utopian city of the future that was planned by Walt Disney. And it's often interchanged. Some people will say Experimental Prototype City of Tomorrow. Right. Um, and then others will say community of so tomorrow. So Epcot is is, uh, is an anagram, right? Is that correct? It's not an actual word, right? Epcot? It's, it's called an acronym. Or an acronym, I meant. So like meant. an anagram is like a, a different reading. <laughs> That's what I meant. Word. I meant an acronym. Okay. I told you. It was a long night last night. That's My okay. brain's not working. That's okay. <laughs> it's an acronym. Oh yeah, okay. And so the E stands for experimental. Yeah. The P stands for prototype. C stands for community or city. Um, o is of, and T is tomorrow. But you couldn't say you can say, oh, I'm going to make an Epcot tomorrow. It's not an actual word. Well, no, because it's a. <laughs> I'm joking, honey. Okay, let's go to the next one. You're just messing with me. <laughs> Here's one then. I got to I got to talk about this at work because. People were using WD-40, and I'm like, do you know what that means? Because I had been research- oh, researching this episode. Oh, you were that person. I, I was that like, person. Well, but I just, I think I revealed that I had just recently researched it. Yeah. It wasn't just You let the cat out of, my, of the bag. Part of my uh, regular repertoire WD-40. knowledge. WD-40. WD-40. I don't know. What's that one? So it stands for Water Displacement 40th Formula. Ah. So it's, it's straight. It's actual, like. You know, license. Yeah, that well, the name is straight out of a lab book that um, that was used by the chemist who developed it. He developed it back in 1953, uh, Norm Larson, and he was a, attempting to concoct a formula to prevent corrosion. So, and you, uh, how you prevent corrosion is by displacing water. So, oh. WD stands for water displacement, displacement. and fortieth formula. The four, because it took him 40 times. It was, there was 40 <laughs> attempts or 40 great. formulas that he had to do before he had one that was successful. So then he called his product WD-40. That's it. You know what? People use that quite loosely. You know, give me some WD-40. Like it's so easy. It just rolls off the end of the tongue. So, you know, good good on him because that's a good name for it. Um, Bay. Bay. Like B-A-E. Okay. You know how they use that? People describe their their... Main squeeze as their bay. Oh, B E Y. B A E. B A E. Oh, like uh, I like don't know. It's like a new new term. Jay Z and Beyonce. That's right. You yeah. got it. So, um, a lot of people say that it stands for before anyone else. Like I put you before anyone else. Other oh. people say it's just a shortened ver- version of babe. Yeah, I never, I never even gave that word a thought. To be honest. <laughs> SWAT. SWAT. I know that one. It's uh. Oh, I don't know, but I do know it. Special weapons, weapons and, and tactics. Uh, tactics. <laughs> also, IMAX is short for image maximum. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Because it's going to round. And my it. very last one is SOS. Uh, what's that one? Send help. <laughs> what is it? It doesn't stand for anything. Uh, <laughs> that was a trick one. It was chosen as a sign of distress because it was um, of its unmistakable Morse code representation. So the S's are three dots, and the O is three dashes. So it's three dots, three dashes, three O's. Sorry, oh. three dots, three dashes, three dots. 
get you SOS. So oh. it was just chose based on the Morse code for the letters. And I bet you it was chosen as well because the letters are uh, very, very, you know, uh, recognizable from the air. That's right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I this hope, was a good I one. I hope you got more than Jeff. And uh, stay tuned for how he quizzes me on something on the next episode. Not the, well, well, we'll some, give you a little a time. Future to one. Yeah, I'll give you a little time to research that one. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to visit InfoQuench.com to subscribe and catch up on past episodes. You can also check out InfoQuench on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Till Til next time. time.